Um, I haven't posted since February. I don't have many good reasons as to why I haven't. I just, I felt discouraged, you know, from like social media in general. And I thought about making a video about like, what is social media even? And like, is this forever? Are we really going to be attached to these social media platforms forever? YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, we're, we're kind of already witnessing the death of Instagram and even myself, I started to post on there a little bit during the summer because I hadn't posted on there either. Even then, I don't scroll, I don't really look at, at many things when I'm on Instagram because I just, I'm not interested. I'm just simply not interested and I don't know how to make myself be interested in it anymore. You know, I deactivated my Facebook almost a year ago, like August 2021, I deactivated it. But anyways, um, hi. <laughs> um, this is me doing new makeup releases because I'm still, I'm still like very into the makeup world still, even though I'm not on Instagram and all of that things. I still, you know, love YouTube and so yeah, I thought I would I thought I would return. <laughs> a lot has happened since then. We got we got a new Beyonce album since my last post. So it's been <laughs> it's been quite a time. But um yeah I just wanted to kind of get into the new makeup releases and maybe I'll go as far back as like a month from now maybe a little more if I really want to talk about something but if you are interested in hearing me talk about makeup for the first time in a long time then hang out and subscribe and we will start the first thing I want to talk about let's just start off with a bang Winky Lux is collaborating with Applebee's Applebee's okay the restaurant they do the zombie drinks right they did like really cheap zombie drinks for Halloween if that was them then I've been to Applebee's once <laughs> but they came out with four lip glosses and they're called a saucy gloss they're 18 dollars each which isn't too bad but this is just so funny like the get me hot buffalo be My Honey Pepper, Sweet Chile Kiss, and Honey Barbecue Tea. The colors aren't terrible. I'm certainly not going to buy it because I'm just not. But I don't know. Like, this isn't the most offensive thing. I'm actually kind of surprised that they're not plumping lip glosses. They just seem like regular lip glosses. And, uh, you know... Food makeup is still definitely a thing since my last video. It's not going anywhere. Speaking of which, this is also like sort of old. This was, well, no. I wanted to talk about the fact that General Mills is coming out with candles. And they're coming out with candles based that smell like their cereals. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cocoa Puffs, Lucky Charms, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Tricks. And here's the thing, like, you probably expect me to laugh at this and be like, ha ah, but like, I do burn candles. And there, are, the thing is, is that there are candles that smell like this already. They're just made by like different people. I know for a fact that TJ Maxx and Marshalls, their DW home brand, they have a candle called Cereal Milk and it smells like Fruit Loops. It smells exactly like Fruit Loops. And I know that there are people that make candles like that already. There's already like cereal inspired candles. And these are like, they're, these are $10. So they're pretty affordable. I don't know where they're gonna be sold. Yeah, it doesn't say where they're gonna be sold. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you could get that as a flavor of like anything. Like I have Cinnamon Toast Crunch Cinnamon. <laughs> like it's called Cinnadust. And then there's Cinnamon Toast Crunch Milk that's sold in stores. Like, you can already get a variety of things with that taste and that, like, sense and flavor. And I don't know, man. Like, it, it's fine. I think that maybe they just realized that people were making cereal-based candles and were like, we need to get in on this. Or maybe realizing that bitches love candles. <laughs> And they're like, we need, well, we need to do something about this, you know, because 
Everything is a cash grab. People do things for cash. Everything is a cash grab. If I see it in stores, I'm definitely going to smell it. Like, I definitely want to smell these to see, like, how they are. But I have no idea where you can get these. Like, do you get these at fucking Target? <laughs> Pat McGrath came out with the new eyeshadow palette, a new Mothership 10, the Moonlit Seduction. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't really get with this one. It's a little too bland for me and I love neutrals so it's like something has to be pretty fucking bland for me to be like this. I, I don't really want to get with this. I don't... I guess it matches the outer packaging sort of but like I don't know man. Mothership palettes are so expensive too. Like I think if I were to get one I would get the Mothership 5. And even then, I'd be like, oh my god, like, am I going to use it enough? Am I going to utilize every shade? Because for $125, I need to use every shade. This one is just like an easy pass for me. I'm just like, what's going on, bro? And I feel like her past few palettes, I haven't really been drawn into. Like, Hue, Topian Dream was an easy pass. Divine Rose 2 looks just like Divine Rose. This, it's like, she hasn't released a super duper interesting palette in a while. She's released interesting things. I really want her blush duos. And she released highlighters recently too. And I've heard that she has a pretty amazing highlighter formula. I'm like sort of on a highlighter no buy because I haven't been wearing it like every single time I do my makeup. I just try to do like a dewy look. And sometimes putting on powder highlight ruins the dew. Who the fuck says that ruins the dude? But sometimes it like tames this down and I'm like, no, oh, that's not what I want. So anyway, this palette, I don't know, man. It's, it's okay. I don't want it. <laughs> I just, I just don't want it. And I'm just kind of waiting for her to, maybe that's good for my bank account, but I'm just kind of waiting for her to release a palette where I'm like, ooh. You know what, yeah. But for now, I'm really just lusting after the one, which is the Mothership 5. Alright, this came out almost two months ago, but I kind of wanted to talk about it. This is the Anastasia Nouveau palette. A lot of people bought this palette, and a lot of people really like it, and I feel bad that that kind of surprises me, because I look at this and I see nothing. And again, it really has to be... <laughs> It really has to be nothing for me, and I know makeup is subjective and all of this, but for me to like not at least like looking at a neutral palette, I certainly don't buy every neutral palette I see because I just tell myself like you have this already. You like it, but you have it. This, the lavender really throws me off, and then when I remove it, it's just like, okay. And with the green packaging, there's what, like one green? Like, I don't know, this is just not for me and people have been saying that it's a good formula it might be a different formula from their previous ones i don't get any FOMO with this you know and it's in a different format it's 12 shades did they always do 12 or did they do 14 it might have been 14 and i still i'm not really fucking with abh because of the whole Putin thing. I thought that, that was really weird. So <laughs> I'm not going to be purchasing things from them. But even then, it's pretty easy not to. Okay, this too. This almost, this came out almost two months ago, but cheese scented nail polish. Velveeta collaborating with Nails Inc. for red and yellow nail polish that smells like cheese. I hesitate to say everyone because, you know, you're not going to find something that everyone loves, but a lot, a lot, a lot of people love cheese, but I, I don't know that many people that are like, cheese, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is just, this is weird, especially because who was asking for nail polish that you could smell? Like, you don't... <laughs> It would still be gross, but it would make more sense if this was like a cheese scented soap. Like a hand soap. Because you know, sometimes you get a really nice hand soap that smells really good, and then after you wash your hands, the smell still lingers around and it's kind of pleasant. 
But this is just like, this isn't that though. Does, is the smell strong enough to where you can smell it from far away or do you have to like go like this? And people have been bringing up the point of like you shouldn't be sniffing your nail polish. You shouldn't be like sniffing those fumes, you know. So, <laughs> so um, this is, this is a pass. I believe they came out with another one that smells like chocolate as well. Which, I would rather smell chocolate than cheese. Now I'm just thinking about the combination of chocolate and cheese, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> but, it's like, I understand that a little bit more, but I still would be like, why are you smelling your fingertips? <laughs> Natasha Denona came out with the mini bronze eyeshadow palette. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I think that I the bronze palette is really beautiful. I like to work with it, it's a very easy formula, and for a neutral bitch, it just hits home for me. So you would probably think, oh, that I would be like all over this, but I'm not. <laughs> it's hard for me to see much variety with five shades, and it definitely could happen, but with these five shades, I don't really see much going on here. Even like the mini nude from Natasha Denona, I feel like I like that more than this. I don't own it. I would like to have her mini eyeshadows someday, but I feel like I would choose that over this if I had to. And I guess it sort of gives bronze vibes. Yeah, I guess looking at it, I'm kind of like it, it can be like a nice little extension of the bronze palette. I mean... Maybe I would feel differently about it if I were to use it with the bronze palette and just use both of those palettes together. But, you know, I don't know that I would buy it for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I shouldn't have to need another palette to use this one. Well, I take that back because I like all shimmer palettes. <laughs> but for something that's supposed to work on its own, I just don't really see it with this one, you know. It's cute, you know, it's not offensive to look at at all, but I just don't, I just don't really feel like I need it. The last midi palette she released was the pastel, right? Because that wasn't super long ago. I just, I wonder what her next midi eyeshadow palette would be, because again, similar to Pat McGrath, I feel like she hasn't released a palette in a while that made me really want it. I mean, probably the Biba. I, I wanted the Biba, but I, I just kind of didn't get it. It's possible I could get it one day, but as far as like her bigger palettes go, I haven't really felt like an urge to get them. Probably since the bronze. Alright, so Hip Dot did another collaboration with My Chemical Romance. I believe this is their third one. And I kind of am just wondering, like, is the band really that involved with their collabs? Or is it just, like, their managers or their team or something? Like, I wonder if Gerard Way is really out here, like, ah, uh, yes. And I just wonder if, like, the band is really involved in this. But regardless, they came out with a eyeshadow palette that looks like a CD. And I don't hate that. I don't hate the packaging and I don't hate the layout of the shadows because it doesn't feel like there's much wasted space to me. They also have a white body paint. They also have a lipstick trio and a pin. So then I wonder, are they just going to do this by their albums? Because that's what they've been doing. Like, the first one was Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. That's what the album is called, right? I get it confused with Made Creek. And then the second one was Danger Days, and now this one is The Black Parade. So I wonder if they're just going to keep doing it. Are they going to do it for like their first album? They don't really have a lot of albums, so it's like I wonder if they're going to still want to do these collabs, you know? But the color story itself, I guess, is fine. Like, they've already done sort of the black and white color story the first time that they did it. They just added like some red in there because that's really the color story you get from this album is just black and white. It's not terrible, I just don't need it, you know? I just don't really feel myself being like, oh, I need this. Also, is Hip Dot's formula good? I've been hearing that it's not. <laughs> you know, people that have actually bought like the game palettes or maybe even the My Chemical Romance palettes, like I've heard that their formula isn't very good. So I wouldn't want to really chance that. Definitely sound off if you have tried Hip Dot's formula because 
I'm curious, even though they haven't really released something that I've wanted. <laughs> because, I mean, if their formula is bad, then it's bad. Right? Glam Gloss Beauty released a blush palette. It's called the Hopeless Romantic Blush Palette. I think this is cute. I'm not going to get it just because I wouldn't use purple blush. I really like the layout of this and the packaging and the heart shapes. I kind of wish that they were released as singles, as like a heart-shaped blush. I think that maybe I would have considered getting one. But these are definitely like unique shades and these are definitely like shades you don't see very often whether they are singles or in a blush palette. I don't often tend to buy blush palettes or really even face palettes because I feel like I won't utilize everything that's in there. And that's definitely the case with this, like I said. But Glam Gloss Beauty, they're a cool brand. They're black woman owned and just as the name suggests, they're glam gloss. The only thing I have from them are their lashes. I don't even wear lashes anymore. Like, I pull them out for, like, Halloween. That's what I've been doing, but I don't wear them, like, all the time anymore like I used to. Maybe I could try something else from the brand. I know that they have eyeshadows and lipsticks and now that they have blushes, so these are cute. These are cute. I just know that I wouldn't utilize all the colors. Ace Beauté came out with a new palette and it's called the Palopoly. And this is a game. So, like, it's kind of like a board game with makeup. And I'm here to say that I really like that idea. Like, I love board games. Me and Danny often play board games with our friends and stuff. So something like this could be, like, fun for me. But I would have to, you know, want to use all the colors. Because really the whole thing with this palette is, like, do what you normally wouldn't do. Get out of your comfort zone. Think outside the box. And, you know, there's purple. <laughs> I'm still on my... I don't like purple phase. So, I, I mean, there are some colors in here that I like. Like, I really like the greens, the reds in there, even like the pinks and the blues. I like the concept of it, but I think that you have to wear lashes as well. Like, you, and also makes you pick a pair of lashes as well. I've also heard people say that, like, this is basically like palette bingo, and you could just do like a random number generator on Google based on your palette and work from there. So, I've heard people say, like, you don't need this to play a game with your makeup so that that's also something to keep in mind but maybe we could see more things like this in the future as possible all right elf came out with the halo glow liquid filter which is like a liquid highlighter or a primer and things it's basically the Hollywood Flawless filter from Charlotte Tilbury, just a drugstore version. They probably knew this was going to come eventually, like a dupe for a Hollywood Flawless filter. I don't have it, but I want it because I'm like, it's such a cult classic that I at least want to see how it worked for my skin. But I still want to try this one. I've heard people say that this one is even glowier than the Hollywood Flawless filter. And people often compare the Or Glow List to the Hollywood Flawless filter as well. I forget if they say that this one or the other one has more pearl in it or glitter, but probably that the Hollywood Flawless filter has like glitter in it a little bit more than this one, where this one is just more radiance. And they came out with a really good number of shades of this too, which is always a plus. I think this is sold out right now. It might be. But I would definitely like to try this someday because I feel like if I am going to buy a highlighter, I would want it to be a liquid one. Once I discovered liquid highlighters and started using them, I think they are better than powder and I would rather use those <laughs> than powder, but I would like to give this a try. Oh, how could I forget this one? Melts brought back the more that they... I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. I've been wanting it really since it came out but i think that when it came out in 2019 i was just like oh i'm broke probably like i don't know if it sold out that initial time and they never brought it back since then because i've been wanting it since like at least 2020 like i bought the vita in 2020. i am surprised that they brought it back i thought that they were gonna be like nah <laughs> i feel like they're really set in their ways sometimes with discontinued products but it was, you know, back by demand. They listened to their audience. And I'm excited to get mine. I'm sure that the formula will be good because I know Melt's formula can be like flip floppy. 
and I'm pretty sure that this palette is one of the good ones. So I'm I might make a video about it. It's because like this is such a hyped up product that I'm hoping that it's worth the hype. So maybe I'll do like a first impressions kind of thing. I bought it like as soon as it restocked and Danny told me like I would have got it for you for your birthday because my birthday is this month. I was like, yeah, but I really want to make sure that I got it. I thought it was going to sell out really quick, which I know it didn't sell out like when it, within a matter of minutes or even like within a day. I'm not sure if it is now or not, but I'm excited. I will finally get to complete the school. Glossier's come this for and basically just finally. <laughs> like Glossier seems like the kind of brand that would be sold at Sephora and I have been wanting them to be sold there for a while especially because like they have some of my favorite products like some of my tried and trues so it would be nice to get some Sephora points for them. Like the future do, this is empty. It lasted like a few months of me using it like all the time. It didn't last forever. I would say that it kind of ran out quicker than I would have liked, but I feel like this is just the primer of primers. And I want to repurchase it. I just haven't because I want to like finish another primer before I finish this because with using that one, I was just neglecting all my other primers. So I want to get a little more use out of them. And then maybe by this one, maybe I'll be a one primer at a time kind of person again like I used to be. And that's currently how I am with setting sprays. Like I have the milk makeup one and I'm like, why do I need any more setting spray? <laughs> the milk makeup setting spray is S tier. It's all that I need. It makes my face really glowy even after setting it with powder and I just and I just I just love it. So Glossier at Sephora. I'm excited for it because like sometimes I don't buy from a brand just because I'm lazy and too lazy to look at their website. I feel like I want another shade of their cloud paints too. So I'm excited for this. Oh, early 2023? It doesn't usually take this long, right? When a brand comes to Sephora, it comes like a month later or something. It's taking pretty long. So, so I mean, hopefully it'll be sold in stores too, maybe have like a gondola for it. I don't know. When, when the day comes, um, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here for it. Halsey created like a sister brand to her brand about face called AF94. She was born in 94. And this is basically just like a Walmart version of her brand, like more affordable products that will be sold in Walmart. And About Face is coming to Ulta as well, so I'm excited to like get About Face products in store. I bought some of her matte eye paints, her matte fluid eye paints. I have more than these, these are just two that I grabbed. And I really like them, they're really easy to use and I just like to use them for like a one shadow look if I'm doing something really quick. And it seems like the AF94 brand is going to have like similar products to that, like eyeshadow crayons, glossy lip crayons, that sounds interesting, a uh, gloss liquid eyeliner. All these products are $10 or under, so I'm excited. I would like to try some of these products. I really like fun makeup brands. like makeup brands that are just like, we want to create products that people can just play with and have fun with and express themselves with. And I feel like About Face has definitely done that. So it would be nice to try like a more affordable version of that. Jacqueline came out with a new collection called Strawberry Feels, a palette, lipsticks, lip liners, and a lip mask. My thing is like, she drew up controversies to talk about this. like. She put on her Instagram story that, look at me, I'm still wearing my infected lipsticks and like, there was nothing really wrong with them guys, like, only 2% of people had a problem, the internet is just so loud and everybody hates me and oh poor me and then, and then she has a collection drop. And it's just like, stop. <laughs> like, l stop with the lipsticks and, you know, I no, I'm not over it. <laughs> especially because you you keep saying nothing actually happened when it did though. <laughs> I don't know, this collection is like fine and you know I'm, I'm not gonna buy it regardless but like she also like a while back she came out with a collection with her mom and I kind of hate when brands try to pull too hard at your heartstrings because it's like I mean this in the most respectful way possible. What does your mom have to do with me? 
why should I buy a makeup product about your mom? That's your mom. Like, I don't think she's a nepotism baby. <laughs> like, your mom isn't somebody that we know. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know you, for better or for worse, but we we don't know your mom. Your mom doesn't have any meaningful impact in our lives. I don't know, like, like Laura Lee collaborated with her niece. And I don't know if her niece was an influencer, per se. I really don't know. But it's just like with Jacqueline, it's like, I don't know your mom. And even with Kylie, which I'll get to it in a second, Kylie collaborated with her mom, but like her mom, we know her mom. Their entire family is famous for better or for worse. <laughs> but it's not as weird for Kylie to do a collaboration with Chris. Chris has a fan base of her own. I don't know if I'm being mean. <laughs> Like, I genuinely am just like, what does this have to do with anything right now? Also, she just releases a lot. <laughs> like, have as, have we noticed that, like, she's almost at ColourPop level? It's like, how do you make all of this? She went from, like, not releasing at all in a year. And then I'm pretty sure she started releasing last year again. Yes. Yes, she did. Now she's releasing, like, a lot. And I don't know if she's trying to make up for that one year she didn't release anything, but nothing is for me because I don't support her. <laughs> Alright, so Kylie is teasing that she's doing a round two with her mom. That sounded awful. <laughs> she's, do <laughs> she's doing a round two of Kylie and Chris collection. I remember when she released the first collection, it was called like Momager, right? But that was a long time ago. That was like, what, 2017 or 2016? So it's like, it's interesting to see you do a part two now. And like, n nowadays people are just doing part twos of their collection, like Moonspell Volume 2, Creepy Cube Volume 2, Fun Size Part 2, like, and it's like, okay, sure but i feel like i'm just seeing too much of it in our media of people trying to just bring back old things everything is just marketed as nostalgia instead of trying to create something new like remakes i hate remakes <laughs> I hate remakes because it's like, just fucking make a new story. Just make something unique. Like, we'll watch it, <laughs> you know? You don't need to try to bank in on us watching something just because we've already seen it. Biopics. Everything is a fucking biopic lately. And it's like, sure, the makeup is impressive. <laughs> it's impressive when you can make somebody look like somebody else. But other than that, it's like, all right. That's all we're seeing these days. And with these part twos of these makeup collections now, I'm kind of wondering, is this the same thing as that? Like, you're just out of ideas. So you're just like, let's bank on something that worked really, really well for us. And even with this collection, the Kylie and Chris part two, I heard that the first collection was really bad. <laughs> like that the formulas were just not good. So interesting. I mean, has anyone ever really said Kylie has a holy grail product for me? She doesn't really appear in any like yearly favorites videos or anything like that. Or maybe I just don't watch people that... <laughs> no, that's not true. I, w I watch a few people that like buy her stuff sometimes, but you know, regardless, um, yeah. <laughs> Even though it hasn't really come out yet, and we don't know what it is yet, I don't need it. I Heart Revolution is collaborating with Looney Tunes, and they're coming out with four mini palettes and a big palette and a face palette and more things. And it's just like, hello. We <laughs> we've had enough of revolution terrorizing our community. Like, I'm sorry. It's not... It's just not. I wouldn't doubt it that kids watch Looney Tunes because kids watch older things, you know, like maybe their parents show it to them. Or even if you do like a movies in the park situation, a lot of old movies are shown. Like me and Danny, we, we went to DC last month and we saw movies in the parks and they were playing the original Ruby Wall, not the Johnny Depp one, the Gene Wilder one. And I thought that that was interesting. And there were a lot of kids there, you know, so it's like kids will see old things and grow to appreciate them for like as long as these things are around. So I wouldn't doubt that 
kids watch Looney Tunes. It's just like, is this for kids or is this for like people my age and older? Like definitely older people have seen Looney Tunes, but like, <laughs> it's just always too much. It kind of looks a little childish too. Maybe that's why I keep associating this with kids is because it looks like kids makeup. I mean, I Heart Revolution in general always has kind of looked like kids makeup to me. So maybe that's where I'm going off with this, but yeah, I, I don't trust the formulas. I don't trust anything. I don't need any of it. All right, P. Louise is dropping a new eyeshadow palette where it's a double drawer of this green eyeshadow palette. It's called the Money Shot. It's not sexual. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But this is so big. Like, I know P. Louise's palettes are incredibly bulky. Like, they're the size of, like, a college textbook. You know, I, I, I don't fuck with P. Louise at all, so that's this is an easy pass for me but how many shades do we get to until this is very repetitive and i love green like i i love green eyeshadow i'm obviously wearing green eyeshadow but this is just too big <laughs> it's too big and it's too bulky and i don't know who's actually checking for peelies I'm not sorry. Gucci has come out with a new collection. This trend mode isn't saying what it's called here, but they have a new eyeshadow palette and a new glow and care shine lipstick. I really want to try um, Gucci's lipsticks and I want to like swatch them in store. The thing about like being in, a, in the small town that I'm currently in is there's technically two Sephora's but they don't carry everything because they're not like that big whereas the Sephora's in Chicago especially the one on Michigan Avenue is very big and they carry like a lot and that one has like Gucci and Tom Ford and like a, a, a lot of the uh, luxury brands that other Sephora's just don't have in store. So I definitely want to like try swatch this in person when I get the chance to because I want to try um, one of the shades. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I had one saved called I Dream Too Much, but I think it disappeared from the website. So I had to like find a different one to want. But they're also coming out with the Flora eyeshadow palette, which is $160 which is probably as much as the last one cost. I know that one was really expensive too. This color story is better than the first one. I thought that the first one was just a whole lot of nothing, but I still wouldn't like, you know, be like, oh, like, like this is a Pat McGrath level. Like I want it. Like I wouldn't say that necessarily. I think I've heard that their eyeshadow formula is good. It's certainly like probably nothing spectacular for me. Like. If you're $160, your shimmers better be fucking wet and like dimensional and metallic and I bet you these are not. Like it's better, but mm, still no. <laughs> still no, but the outer packaging is very beautiful, honestly. That's something that Gucci does well is their packaging. Maybe I'll try the lipsticks. The new lipstick is they met in Argentina, which didn't they have one? Maybe just a different formula, but yes, I would like to try it one day and pretend that I'm Miley Cyrus in, in, in her Gucci ads. Have you seen that picture of Jared Leto and Lana Del Rey? I'm um, like the two most, I say it, I, I, ha okay, I hesitate to say the two most unlikable people. Jared Leto is incredibly unlikable and I, I don't like him at all. Lana Del Rey, I don't know if I'd say she's incredibly unlikable, but I I'm not necessarily like defending her actions. Like, did you guys see she took a picture in front of Cook County Jail? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And apparently her boyfriend is just a creep, allegedly. So anyways, yes, Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. All right, I've been sitting here for a while, so I'm just gonna talk about one more thing. I wanna talk about the Blend Buddy Cosmetics. This is their Primal Palette. And I know that the story of this palette is she's filling in the gaps from her other rainbow palette, the Blends palette, and putting in like different undertones of the colors in this palette, and putting in huge pans for the black and the white in case people have used up their black and white from the other palette. 
And this is smaller than her other palettes because that was like my gripe with them was that they're too big. I can't. I can't. <laughs> and this one, it does kind of just look like a rainbow palette to me. Like, I'm sorry, but it. I don't really buy rainbow palettes. The only one that I would could see myself getting is the Cake palette from Glamlight. But usually, just as a general rule, I don't really buy rainbow palettes. This is just, I want, you know, I really want to try Blend By's formula because it's so fucking hyped and I want to see, like, what the hype is about and all of these things. But, you know, this palette, and there are some interesting colors in here. Like, some, they were, like, sneak peeking some of the shades. You know, sneak peeks, like, the yellow shades and the green shades, and I really liked those. I don't know. I mean, I can't even sit here and say that, like, the colors are ugly. I think that just maybe if there was a little, if it was just a little more condensed and a little more you interesting than just Colors of the Rainbow that I would buy it. I've kind of been like disinterested in palettes in general lately. The last one I bought I had to have been the Hella palette from Odin's Eye before buying Wedge Day obviously. But so it's like I just haven't really had that palette kick because sorry because I've just been telling myself like if you don't like all the shades don't get it. And that's really worked. <laughs> it's really worked on me and it's really rare that I find a palette that I like all the shades. You know, there's always those one or two that you know you're not really going to use. Well, I tell myself if there's those one or two you're not going to use and don't get it. <laughs> Unless like, I don't know, the colors, the rest of the colors are like super, super interesting and innovative and sparkly and oh my god. I wonder if Blend Bunny will ever release like some face products, like some blushes, bronzers or something. Man, can you believe I didn't even talk about any bronzers in this video? <laughs> There's been so many bronzers released this summer and I do want them all. <laughs> I do want them all. I love a cream bronzer. I love a bronzer. I don't know, I just didn't talk about any here, but Yes, I, I would even be interested to like see their formulas and like other things. I'll just watch the brand from afar and hope that they make another small cut. While we were here, here at the end, this is the end. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I felt like I was definitely rusty. I've taken a break before that lasted me like a few months and so I don't mean to like do these on purpose but if you sat through my video after months of waiting on me because I know that's all you did was wait for my next upload. Um, thank you so much for being here. Definitely tell me how you're feeling about any of these releases. You know we got Applebee's. <laughs> We got Applebee's makeup now, which I know that's, that's what we've all been waiting for. So I also wanted to show that I got a new tattoo. This one right here, I got this in June. Bruised but not beaten. I got this uh, tattoo candy in Chicago. I went to Tanner. But anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Gabrielle Rizza. And you've been a lovely audience. And I'll talk to you later.